Hello and welcome to our instructional series of videos. In this installment, we're going to show you how to replace the battery in the 2019 16-inch MacBook Pro. This process involves the use of flammable substances and runs the risk of fire or personal injury if the battery you're removing gets damaged during removal. For your safety, be sure to both read all the information included with your kit and watch this video in its entirety before proceeding. We've gathered all our materials and are working on a soft, static-free work surface. We're now ready to begin. Before we go opening up the MacBook Pro, we first want to temporarily disable the auto boot function. We'll re-enable it later when we're done. To do this, launch terminal and enter sudo nvram auto boot equals percent zero zero. Then hit return. You'll be asked for your password. Go ahead and type that in. Note that your cursor won't move as you type in the password. Once you've entered that command, you can now shut the MacBook Pro down and close it. The first thing to do is place the cloth that came with your kit over the keyboard of your MacBook Pro and close the lid to help protect your screen in case of any spillage of the adhesive remover. We can now remove the bottom cover. There are six pentalobe screws on the bottom cover that we'll need to remove. We'll start with the two on the hinge edge as they're slightly longer than the others. You can then remove the four screws along the bottom edge. The cover is held in place by a pair of clips, one on each side. To disengage these clips, use the suction cup from your kit to lift up on one of the front corners, then slide one of the plastic cards underneath the cover and carefully run it along the edge until the clip pops free. Then do the same thing on the other side. You should now be able to grasp the front edge of the cover and pull it out of the retaining clips holding it on the hinge edge. Just above the battery, there's a plastic covering over the power board, which will need to be removed. Simply peel it away, taking care not to damage the cable underneath. Next, lift the tab on the cable to reveal the socket underneath. Use your nylon tool to gently lift the latch on the socket. Then slide the cable out and move it aside. You can now remove the large Torx T5 screw that holds the power connection closed. Then, lift the metal tab up to completely disconnect power from the battery. Finally, remove the other Torx T5 screw holding the board in place. Now we can move on to the trackpad connector, which is held in place with two Torx T3 screws and a metal plate, which also need to be removed. You should then be able to lift straight up on the connector to detach it, then carefully peel the cable away from the battery. Next, we need to remove the trackpad entirely. Start by removing these nine Torx T5 screws along the edges. Then, remove these four T5s at the front edge corners. With the computer still upside down, slowly and carefully lift open the MacBook Pro. 
The trackpad should stay in place. Be extremely careful to ensure no washers have fallen off. Then slide the trackpad cable out through the slot in the chassis. You can then carefully set the trackpad aside. Now we need to loosen the logic board so that we can route some battery cables out from underneath it. We're going to remove these six T3 and T5 screws that help hold the board down. The ones along the edges and next to the fan are T5s. The other three are T3s. There are also different lengths, so you may want to separate them as you remove them. At this point, we're going to be working with adhesive remover, so be sure you're working in a well-ventilated area and use the protective glasses and gloves included in your kit. Start by drawing about a quarter of a milliliter of adhesive remover into the included syringe. Place one of the included plastic cards along the edge of one of the side cells so that it sits slightly underneath. Use the syringe to apply adhesive remover to the card so that it flows down and underneath the battery cell. Let it set for a minute or two, then carefully work the card under the battery cell separating the adhesive. After a little bit, you should be able to lift one cell free and move on to the next, adding more adhesive remover and working the card under like you did before until that cell comes free as well. Then, repeat the process on the other side. For the center cells, place the card along the innermost edge of one and apply the adhesive remover and work the card underneath the cell as before until it's free. Then do the same with the other cell. Now we need to raise the logic board up slightly. Place your nylon tool in between the fan and the logic board on one side, and use it to lift the board slightly. Slide the unused plastic card from your kit into the gap created and remove the tool. The board should remain raised. Then, use your nylon tool the same way to raise the other side. You should now have enough room to route the battery cables out from under the logic board and remove the battery entirely. While it's optional, it's generally a good idea to remove the remaining adhesive from the battery bay so that the new battery has a clean surface to adhere to. To do this, simply use a little of the adhesive remover and use the card from earlier to scrape each adhesive strip up until you can peel it the rest of the way off. Once you're done, wipe up any extra adhesive remover and let the MacBook Pro sit for about a half an hour to ensure everything has evaporated and dried.
The first thing we'll want to do is reinstall the trackpad as it's easier to do so before we install the battery. Before reinstalling, first double check to make sure the silver washers are around all the posts. If one is missing, check underneath and inside the MacBook Pro as they can fall off easily. Then, simply slide them over their corresponding posts. Once you've double checked the silver washers, open the MacBook Pro and carefully slide the trackpad approximately into place. Feed the cable through the slot in the chassis, then slowly close the MacBook Pro, adjusting the trackpad so its posts line up with the corresponding holes in the chassis. Now it's time to reattach the trackpad. Start with these four Torx T5 screws near the edgemost corners, which are slightly shorter than the others. Then, replace the remaining nine screws along the sides, which are all the same length. You can now set the new battery into place, routing the battery board cables underneath and making sure the board itself is aligned in the right position. You can then remove the plastic from the battery top. Secure the battery board next with the smaller of its Torx T5 screws. Then, remove the card and tool holding up the board to allow it to set back into place. Now we can replace the logic board screws we removed earlier. Start with the two T5 screws along the edges as they're longer than the others. The next three longest screws go here along the front and will require a T3 screwdriver. Finally, the shortest screw goes in the spot next to the fan and is a T5. You can now remove the adhesive backing on one of the side cells and press it down into place. Then, do the same on the other side. Next, flip each of the center cells up from the middle of the computer, remove the backing from the adhesive, and set each back down into place. Fold the trackpad cable back over across the top of the center cell and press the connector into place. Then, press the cable down so that any residual adhesive will stick to the new battery. Secure it by replacing the retainer cover and two Torx T3 screws. You can now fold the metal tab over the battery connector and secure it with the large T5 screw. Then, slide the ribbon cable back into its connector until it's fully seated. Lock the connector by moving the lever flat. Finally, peel the backing off the included plastic shield and set it into place over the battery board.
There are a series of clips on the hinge edge of the cover that attach to the chassis on the MacBook Pro. Holding the cover as flat as you can, push the cover towards the hinge edge so that these clips engage and the cover sits flush. We can now replace the six bottom pentalobe screws. Start with the two in the corners on the hinge edge, which are slightly longer than the others. Then, replace the remaining four screws, which are all the same size. Finally, flip the MacBook Pro over and remove the cloth. Now that the battery's been installed, we need to calibrate the power system. First, plug in the USB-C charger and let the battery charge up to 100%. Once it's reached 100%, keep it charging for at least another two hours. However, you can use your computer during this time rather than leaving it off. After that, we'll need to discharge the battery. First, in the Energy Saver Preference pane, make sure all the sliders are set to the right and any power saving measures, like sleeping the hard drive, are turned off. Do this for both the power adapter and the battery settings. Once you've done that, disconnect the power cable and let the battery discharge completely until the computer shuts down. Continue using it even through the low battery warning. Don't do anything particularly heavy. Steady and even usage will result in better power system calibration. Leave it shut down for at least 5 hours to ensure the battery is completely drained. Then, fully charge the computer back up to 100% without unplugging. Once the battery is charged back up, the power management system is properly calibrated. You can now set your energy saver settings back to normal and use your computer as you normally would. All that's left to do is re-enable boot on open. To do this, launch terminal and enter sudo nvram autoboot equals percent zero three, then hit return. You'll be asked for your password. Enter that and hit return. Boot on open is now reactivated and your MacBook Pro is ready to use.